Hey booze! In this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. I didn't think for you to be proud of her. Of course you have. You are marrying a man who can support you. Okay, so Kiki Palmer. <laughs> now, y'all know I got quiet about this situation. I got real quiet about this situation. And I told y'all why my my day ones, the people that really be locked in with me, I told y'all why I got quiet about this situation. And I'm gonna just rip the band-aid off because I'm a fire sign. That's what we do. They're back together. Okay. They playing house. They back together. This is not a co-parenting outing. This is we in a relationship outing. They back in the sack. Now there are rumors out here that she may be pregnant, but listen, listen, we get bloated. I get bloated. So Kiki may just be bloated. She may not be pregnant, but you know what? You know what? You know what? I said that the last time about Kiki Palmer. You know what happened? She ended up pregnant. So, you know, this could go either way. This could go either way. But I know they in the bed, though. I know they I know they woke up and they, they was rolling around in that bed this morning. You want to know why? Look at their outfit. They matching. They matching. She got on white sneakers. And then she got on some shorts and then they got on the same type of uh, top on. They wearing a hat. and every You not fooling me. You are not fooling me. Y'all got dressed together this morning. And then y'all took that baby to the zoo. The issue that I have is, Kiki, you got everyone invested in your domestic dispute that you have with this man. And now you coming out and you back with this man, potentially pregnant. I got to add that in there. And we just supposed to be okay with it and not ask no questions or nothing when she never, and this is another thing, she never released the video. She only released frames of the video. So we never saw the video that she had put out here that uh, TMZ had posted. We never saw the video. We only saw, we only saw frames of the video. So, I, and, and I had to make sure because I'm like, I didn't have a video. And I went searching for it. I'm like, oh, they never had a video. They only had frames of a video. So we don't even know what really happened. We can only go off of what was being reported at that time. And uh, Darius did upload photos and videos claiming that she also abused him. So that Armand Wiggins was the one that had the information on his YouTube channel. He uploaded photos on Twitter and in his YouTube video where he had scratches on his back. And I think he had bruises and more, and more scratches on his forearm. So, and, and then it is, it is questionable. It is, it's questionable just how all of this kind of played out. But what's even more questionable was I told y'all not that long ago that Kiki Palmer admitted that she used to beat her ex-boyfriend and it was in her book. Wiggins, whom shared the leaked information that we covered yesterday, he's unearthed an excerpt from Kiki's book where she admitted to being abusive in a past relationship. So the book was titled, I Don't Belong to You, and it reads this right here. As my resentment grew, my darkness started showing up. Old bad habits, defense mechanisms, hurt people, hurt people. Sometimes I went off on him just to get a rise out of him. I couldn't express my pain and the fact that he couldn't see I was hurting caused me, I think, to subconsciously show him through making him feel that same hurt. And just like that, our relationship became physically and emotionally abusive and mostly on my part. Sometimes we think only guys can be abusive and it's not true. Things can get out of hand for anyone when you have feelings you ain't dealt with. There was one time in the middle of the night when we got into a crazy fight. I should say morning because it was like 3 a.m. and I wanted him to leave. He wouldn't and he wouldn't let me leave. I was texting my best friend, Jamie, the whole time. And like in a movie, she hopped out of her bed without question and came to pick me up. He left when he realized I'd called her to come. But when she dropped me off the next morning, he somehow was right on the couch. He never hit me. But we fought for the first time two years of living together. I started to feel so ashamed as if I was turning into the monster that I promised myself I would never become. This wasn't me. 
Who was this? How did I end up on this end of it? How? I thought to myself, by the third year, I told myself I couldn't be that person anymore. If that's what this relationship brought out of me, I didn't want it. I was tired of feeling like he was my responsibility and uh, the fact that our relationship had become codependent in every area. Now, let's look at some comments on this post. So this person says survivors admit their wrongdoings. Now, before we get into it, in my opinion, we really don't know their situation. So it, it can, this situation could go either way. Did she go back to this man and drop the charges and the custody hearing that she was scheduled to have and all of that because she felt guilty that, you know, there was parts that she played in, in their issues? I don't know. Because we never saw that video. We only saw what took place. Now, this is my opinion. I think her mother and her family put her up to the PR stunt that she pulled when everything was unfolding. And I think they were really in her ear in her mom, particularly because her mom has a lot of control over Kiki as her manager. She seems to be very overbearing. Now the mother to me is toxic because she doesn't have firm boundaries with her mother. And I kind of understand like she's a childhood star. So her mom has really been there advocating for her, protecting her and everything like that, which makes sense. But something about her mother just seems toxic to me. Like she's controlling, overbearing. And the reason why she does not like Darius is because they're very similar. He likes control. He's overbearing. He may even come across like overprotective, protective, but really insecure. And so I think that's the reason why his her mother doesn't like Darius and Darius doesn't like her mother because they want to use her. They want control over her. And Kiki doesn't have really good boundaries when it comes to her mother or Darius. So I think that's the issue here. But again, it could, this situation could really go either way. Maybe she dropped the charges because it could be the typical abuse story where a woman goes back to her abuser and stuff like that. Or it could be the other way around where she dropped the charges in the court hearing and everything. Just let it all go simply because she played a part in all of this. Who knows? But one thing that I do know is we never saw that video. And that video would have cleared up a lot of speculations regarding everything and why she's moving in the way that she's moving. Because it doesn't make any sense to us. It does not. She accused this man of some very serious things. I just don't agree with it at all for her to go back to him knowing that this is what she accused him of doing. So it's just very weird. And then, like I said, it doesn't look like they're just co-parenting. It looks like they are back together. That's what it looks like. So it's very weird to me. It's very, very weird. So like I said, this situation can go either way. I'm going to just keep my comments regarding Kiki's choices and decisions to myself because I don't know the situation and the situation is very sensitive. It's a very sensitive topic. It's a very serious topic that has to do with domestic violence. And so for that, I'm going to just mind my damn business. You know, I'm going to just wipe my hand with it. But like I said, I think that's the real issue between the mama and Darius and, and why they don't really like each other and stuff like that. I think her mother is very overbearing. She doesn't have great boundaries with her. And I think Darius is very similar and he has control issues. Her mama got control issues and Kiki don't know how to stand up for herself. That's what I think. Not in a, not in, and she can probably take some lessons from Jackie Ina when it comes to the situation on setting better boundaries. And uh, I understand her mom is her manager, but maybe it's time to make that change. You know, Beyonce had to make that change. So maybe it's time for Kiki to make that change when it comes to her mom being a manager. Cause it's, it seems like it's a lot abusers don't what is the goal here so what so what so what y'all acting like this woman can't go make a complaint because she was in a toxic relationship before so because she put her hands on a nigga before she can't go file a report that she's being hit on currently this person says i don't know why people are coming to armand y'all are always manipulated by the popular side it's crazy again he didn't justify her getting abused but from context of the video in this book kiki isn't a saint either neither is her mother when you let the bias go you see <sighs> y'all i don't Listen, it's not about me giving Kiki credit. I don't think I, there's a part of me that wants to say she's not innocent, but I don't have any proof. So I don't want to say she's not innocent because she's not the perfect victim. You know what I mean? But is it that she, if she's not the perfect victim, right? And she was putting her hands on this man, 
well, she's not the perfect victim. Um, but honestly, I think they in a, I think they're both toxic. And I think that they're both in a toxic relationship where they're putting their hands on each other. That's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I think. Uh, Kiki has always been pretty outspoken. And then, yeah, you have reactive abuse. So you, you that's the thing. It's like, you don't really know what type of abuse or what type of arguments that they really have. You really don't know. So, I mean, like I said, it could go either way. It go either way. Either she is truly a victim in this situation where this man is just abusing her and she ran back to her abuser, or it could be that she too is part of the problem. Kiki is not going to address any of this. She's just going to let whatever she's, she's just going to let this blow over. She's probably not going to address anything or make any comments because, uh, her situation has never been really public. Her private life has never been public until this relationship. And I think she wants things to go back to that, especially if she's pregnant. And I hope she's not pregnant, though. I really I really do. I hope she's not pregnant. Um, but this is a pretty typical abuse pattern, right? Um, getting back together with the abusive person, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And that is why... We talk a lot about on this app about how pick me's are dangerous because we've got videos of this guy. She had video evidence of this guy abusing her. We never saw the video. We never saw it. We heard about a video. We saw frames of the video, but we didn't see the video. So because we didn't see no video, and then Darius is making his claims and Kiki is making hers. They're, they're both uploading. He uploaded photos and she uploaded frames of a video. I, I don't know. Like I said, it could go either way. It could go either way. It could go both ways. Who knows? And if this story is true, she's going back to him. Like it's difficult to be friends with someone and support them when they behave like this. Because this kind of attitude, constantly making excuses for their abuser going back to them, you know, just because, you know, they're the father of your child. Being in a relationship with someone, marrying someone, dating someone, just because you're having their baby is a stupid ass reason to do something. And this is a controversial opinion that I have, but I'm of the mind that sex and relationships and reproduction are two different things. And while some people think that it was a mistake for the culture to separate them. I still don't think. Where, where y'all, where did y'all see the video? Put the link in the chat. Let me pull it up. I haven't seen no video. We never saw it because I was waiting on it. That was part of the reason why I, I went quiet. I was like, I'll just wait for the video to come out. But the video never came out. We only got those frame shots. Because when you conflate those things, you end up doing something that's dangerous for you. That ends up putting you at risk, your life at risk, and the future and life of this little person that you're hoping to bring into the world. The reason why I'm playing this video is because it's 2024. Women are exposing themselves when they come online, they play victim a lot. Like there was a girl that was just scamming. I didn't talk about it, but she was just scamming. I think she came on TikTok and she said that she almost got kidnapped. And she had to jump, jump out of a, a moving vehicle because she was almost kidnapped. Let me see if I can pull that up. And she lied. And I'm just like, girl, why would you lie about something like that? And people were donating, people were sharing, and people were doing all of this stuff. Uh, let me see if I can find it. So she lied. And then people started exposing her. Yesterday, I almost died jumping out of a moving lift because the lift driver was trying to kidnap me. So I work at the Clinton Outlets in Connecticut. If you live in Connecticut, you know the Clinton Outlets is exit 63. I live in New Haven, Connecticut, which is about 30, 30 minute rise. When I got a female driver, I was so happy, y'all, so happy. And the crazy thing about it is Lyft had gave me a female driver and then Lyft switched it and gave me another female driver because she was closer. Yesterday, um, Lyft gave me a notification saying, okay, your ride is outside. So, you know, I got my things ready, got my bag. I, I went outside. I, the, the license plate, the car, the driver, everything matched the picture on Lyft. Everything was correct. 
okay, the driver, she had like this accent. I can tell she was foreign. Before we got off exit 63, she was on the phone with, with some man. And she was like explaining to them what I was wearing. I didn't think too much of it because first she was speaking another language. I don't know what she was speaking on the phone with this man. She, the language she was speaking, it sounded like it was, she was from the Middle East. Or, but she said something in English when she was on the phone with the man, which is weird because she was speaking another language. And then all of a sudden she started to say, dark, dark skin, red sweater. When she said, she said, when she said red sweater, dark skin, when she said red sweater, dark skin, I had on a red sweater and I'm dark skin. So she was describing whoever she was on the phone with. She was describing me to that person, what I was wearing, how I looked, which was weird. I did not, I did not think too much of it because I was about to be to work. I was almost to my destination. So, you know what, even though I was nervous, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just let, I'm gonna just let God handle the rest. You know, I'm about to be to my destination. I'm gonna just let her take me to my destination. But we got off exit 63. Okay, so I'm back to finish the story. I'm so sorry, y'all. I could not finish the video the other day. I was not right emotionally. I had a lot on my plate. Everything was the incident happened. That is why my face looks better. But the damage is, is already done. The trauma is still there. Let me finish the story. Okay, so we got off exit 63. The Lyft driver. The girls are just coming out here lying, y'all. They just, they just lying. I, I'm not even going to finish it because I just wanted y'all to see how she came on like that to get people's reaction, right? And then in the next frame, this is how she came. And then people started exposing her. She's a known scammer. That's what they saying. She had to turn left to get to my destination. Once you get off exit 63, the Lyft driver had her left turn signals on. Mind you, she had her left turn signals on. So she knew, even she knew she had to turn left. Even the GPS told her she had to turn left. Guess what she did? She ended the ride and got back on the highway. We were almost to my destination. She got back on the highway while I was still in the car. I'm like telling her, ma'am, you passed my destination. What are you doing? This lady did not say nothing. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? She told me to shut up. She didn't have to tell me nothing else. I jumped out that car so fast. I jumped out the car while it was moving. That shit hurt so bad. I thought I was going to die because she was going fast. Like, you know, when somebody's trying to kidnap you, they try to go fast. They try to like get away with it fast. That's how fast she was going while I was jumping out the car. You know, that day I thought I was never going to see my mom. This is what the red flag was for me. You know, when someone's trying to kidnap you? No. I don't know when someone's trying to kidnap me, what that's like. So we just need to be more discerning when it comes to these situations and stop automatically putting the woman in that victim role because she may be playing you like, she just may be playing in your face. And I, I don't like that because it does, it takes away from real victims. It takes away from believing black women. Like it just, it takes, it just strips so much away from us. So you should be discerning. First, somebody posted Carly Russell. <sighs> so my point is, don't be quick to make women online who come online with a sob story, don't be quick to make them a victim. Like really use your discernment and really evaluate the situation. That's all I'm gonna say, including Kiki Palmer. Cause like I said, it could really go either way. And the way she's moving, it, it really doesn't make sense. And like I said, it could be that she is the victim and she ran back to the abuser, or it could be that they were both putting their hands on each other and they're in a toxic relationship. We don't know. So, and we won't know because she dropped the restraining order case and the custody case that she had coming up and she dropped that three months ago. So we don't know. And then it looks like she may be actually pregnant by this man.